I think we all look at the world today and we realize that we are facing many challenges, whether they are in the economic domain, in, in social issues such as inequality, poverty or environment, climate change, erosion of ecosystems. In 2015, the nations of the world came together and set themselves an agenda, an agenda to work together. And that is essentially the product that we now refer to as the Sustainable Development Goals. 17 goals that are not the answer to everything, but they provide a framework, a framework for looking at issues together with a common understanding, but also a framework that can become a platform at national level in the business world. We refer to them as universal goals because they bring all nations together, but also integrated. They've kind of become an organizing principle. People can, can rally around the particular goals that they're interested in, that their investment thesis is. Is that, I mean, is that, that, is that bearing fruit? Uh... Yes, because, you know, we live in an age of, of complexity and complexity can be paralyzing so the first thing that that I think the goals provide is a sort of common understanding of how do we deal with complexity the goals also provide us with entry points but we should always realize that one of the premises of the sustainable development goal is that you can't just pick out one goal and say that's the only thing I worry about the relationship between these goals is first of all one that will allow you to be more successful it can produce multiple benefits so you know we lived in a in a 20th century world where economic progress defined essentially success. At the beginning of the 21st century, the social and the environmental dimensions are haunting us in part because of the failures that we did not recognize soon enough. Revolutions happen, planetary challenges happen. The economy of the 21st century needs to be one that delivers prosperity, but also equity and outcomes and opportunities and a sustainability pathway. We can't use this planet like a mining operation. And that is in part, I think, where business now finds the Sustainable Development Goals are very interesting because there is a global marketplace out there. If it starts operating with a common understanding of what matters, what needs attention, it's also a way to connect consumers and producers. The markets of tomorrow are in part defined through the Sustainable Development Goals because they focus on the challenges that together with the business world, the impact investment community, we can begin to turn into, into solutions and therefore markets for investment, for technology, for new business models. Well, you, there I think that you'll tell me the numbers, but people talk about a financing gap of something like $2.5 trillion a year in, in reaching these goals. Um, it's, at some level, it seems like a staggering number. Um, is it, is, how do we fill that gap? Well, when you look at the fact that total wealth in the world is somewhere around 300 trillion, then, then you can see that actually, in part, it captures a degree to which economic activity would happen anyway. The question is, can investment, can our wealth that we have accumulated be invested in tomorrow's economy that provides solutions to some of these problems, or do we simply invest it in the 20th century economy, on energy technology, on mobility, on the concepts for urban living and, and urbanization, but also on agriculture. How do we produce the food to feed 10 billion people without destroying the very capital, which is soils and, and water resources that we use? We also waste over 35% of all food produced every year. It's never consumed, I and mean, it's an extraordinary economic failure. It's that which we need to address together, and that is where I think the Sustainable Development Goals become an enabler to draw capital, to align our capacity to invest, which is enormous, unprecedented in, in history of humanity today, with the development outcomes that we actually wish to have for our children, for our community, for our nations. So it's not really a gap at some level, it's kind of an opportunity map of the, of the, of the big industries, the big sectors of the 21st century. Well, it's a gap for those who are actually trying to bring new solutions to these problems to the market, to, to our societies, because they cannot find the investors to put their money there. But as we know, there are people all over the world sitting on enormous mountains of cash, wanting to invest and not finding the right opportunities. So we have a, a misalignment here. That's where part of the work of the United Nations with its specialized agencies working with governments is trying to address the public policy framework. because. If we can incentivize these investments, suddenly we open up channels for enormous amounts of funding actually being directed towards these solutions. Just a simple example, take climate change. In just 15 years, because of the realization that we had to decarbonize our energy supply, a whole new energy revolution has unfolded. We now have a 300 billion plus investment market every year in renewable energy technology. The patents were in drawers for decades. It was when public policy, on behalf of our societies, took the decision that we have to make the transition, suddenly the opportunities for investment arose and the private sector, impact investment, 
has created truly a transformation in our energy systems. These are the kinds of interfaces between recognizing where the need to act is, looking at the potential for drawing in investors and putting the right public policy in place.